That makes my eyes water thinking about that number. Hello everyone, it's Tom the Taxi Driver and welcome back to my channel where we navigate London and life. I specifically want to talk about taxi expenses. I know a lot of people get hung up on how much money do you earn? Ah, oh, taxi drivers are minted. You're literally driving round in a money box on wheels. I've been guilty of this myself before I got my badge. You know, you get in a cab, you do a 15 minute journey and maybe with the tip, it comes to about 15 pounds. Well, in my head, I'm thinking, right, 15 pounds, 15 minutes. Okay, you can get four of those in the hour. That's 60 pounds an hour. Well, if he does 10 hours, he's earned 600 quid. Firstly, that's not correct because very rarely do you sort of bounce from one job to the next over a sustained period of time. You might get it for a couple of hours, but not throughout an entire day. That's pretty much unheard of. But also, there's actually a lot of expenses on that money before it goes in their back pocket. Turnover is vanity, profit is sanity. This video is gonna basically break apart all of the things that I need as a taxi driver so I can go out and effectively earn money. Firstly, the most obvious thing is you need a taxi. Now, I could do simplicity and give you prices if you was to rent a taxi, but I'm gonna give you my actual figures, what it costs for my taxi. You may have seen in my drive with me videos that I have one of the nice shiny new electric taxis. Now I fought long and hard before getting this vehicle, but primarily I got it because it's the only brand new vehicle, at least at the time, that you could get and operate in London. I couldn't buy a brand new diesel, I'd have to buy a used one, and their lifespans are generally being cut short because diesels are slowly not being allowed in London. So I had to opt for an electric vehicle. At around £60,000 for that vehicle, almost £70,000 once you factor in the staggering interest they put on it, I pay £1,087 and 1p every single month. And that's for five years. That's a five-year higher purchase plan, meaning that once that's done after that space of five years, that cab is mine. I don't have to pay out a balloon payment. Broken down as a weekly cost, that's £250.85. Taxi drivers actually have to have an incredibly enhanced level of insurance. It's called hire and reward insurance. And that basically means that whenever I have passengers in the back, that they are covered as well as me, their goods, whatever they might be having going on there. My first year of hire and reward insurance was so expensive because normal car no claims don't count towards it. You have to start a brand new fresh policy. And of course, being a relatively young cab driver with not much years experience in the industry, I was paying close to £4,000 to insure my nice new TXE. Thankfully, a couple of years no claims on my belt, that has brought that down. So my annual premium now is just over £1,800, or if we break that down weekly, it's £35.48 weekly. When the LEVC TXC was first released, the tax was very high. It was close to 400, 500 pounds a year. Because of the price of the vehicle, because it's over 50,000 pounds, it automatically fell into the government's tax bracket that is luxury vehicle. I.e., if you're spending that much on a vehicle, you can get stung with a higher amount of tax. After some lobbying, the fact that is zero emissions capable and of course a working vehicle, we managed to get that down to a more reasonable figure. So the tax on my taxi is £145 a year or £2.79 a week. Every vehicle in the UK needs an MOT. If you don't know what an MOT is, it's effectively a thorough inspection of the mechanical side of the vehicle. A taxi in the UK actually needs two MOTs every year. This is of course, because it is a working vehicle, it actually does more mileage than your standard private vehicle. Average MOT in the UK is about £45. I need two of those, so that's £90 for the year, or £1.73 if we break that down weekly. Taxi drivers also have to have an enhanced criminal record check. I pay £13 a year for this service, which is about 25p a week. My taxi has to do an annual overhaul. Now this is actually for Transport for London and this ensures that my vehicle is deemed appropriate for licensing in London. If you think of the MOT as kind of 
the physical check of the vehicle, the mechanical check, then the overhaul is probably more a visual standard. But basically, my cab can't be too dented, it can't have lots of damage and scratches, the seats must be in good condition, credit card machine must be fitted, adequate signage which tells the passenger about the service, etc, etc. I need one of those every year. That's £110 or £2.12 a week. Every three years, I need to renew my badge, my driver's badge. Now, some of you have actually asked, you have to do the knowledge, the in-depth study, and do you ever have to do a retest? And no, that's one of the great things about being a working London taxi driver. Once you have that badge, that is yours for life. Whether you decide to work on the streets or put that badge in a drawer, so long as you renew it every three years, you will always have that qualification. It costs £300 every three years, £100 a year, or £1.92 a week. And then finally, the other non-negotiable to my cab is the meter. All of London's taxis are licensed vehicles. They are licensed and operated by Transport for London. Transport for London set the metered rate. Us cab drivers have no influence on that and the actual meter itself, I do not own. So whilst I can own the vehicle and all these other things attached to my vehicle, I still have to rent that meter every single year as it's actually serviced and maintained by a third party company that specifically deals with that. If you buy two years of rental in advance, it's 280 pounds, that's 140 pound a year or two pounds 62 a week. So non-negotiables, the minimum that I need to get in a cab and go out driving, excluding of course all my time on the knowledge, that's probably a separate video, is £352 a week. Okay, so those are the non-negotiables, everything you need to be able to sit in the driver's seat of a cab. So there are some other optional fees that can come into your expenses as a cab driver. For instance, I have an accountant. I'm very good at bookkeeping overall numbers, but actual kind of tax implications or things like the vehicle where you have capital allowances, the cab is a depreciating asset, and being able to be most effective with uh, cash flow and taxes is probably not my forte. So I'd much rather pay a professional for that. My accountancy fee is £40 a month or £9.23 a week. I'm also a member of a union. Now there are several taxi driver unions. If you're self-employed, you might already be familiar with this concept. But basically, if you're not employed by someone, then kind of employee rights that you get de facto from your employer, from a workplace, aren't necessarily present if you're self-employed. So things like legal representation, or if there was an accident with a cyclist, and things that can kind of get very messy very quickly, you really need a good union that can help represent you. I pay £16.80 a month for my union representation, or well, it's about £3.88 a week. So for my accountant and my union, it's £13.11 every week. Then of course, we have some running costs. These are kind of costs that exacerbate the more you drive the cab. The most obvious one is tires. Of course, some taxis can do a lot of mileage. I've recently just come around to having my tires changed on my taxi, and they've lasted almost two years, so I've had some good life out of them. The replacement tires are about 280 pounds for a full set of four, and I need to get them fitted. So if I factor in, let's say, 200 pounds a year for tires, it's roughly three pounds 85 a week. Other consumable things are things like wiper blades. I've recently done that for my MOT. I got two years out of the standard set of wiper blades, recently replaced them, they cost £40, so if we break that down yearly, of course £20, which is about 38p a week. Petrol, another huge variable in the cab. This also changes if I do a lot of electric charging, or maybe some drivers might have electricity points at home. On general, I spend about £100 to £120 a week on petrol. Receipt pads. When you're working in town, you need to be able to give out a receipt as many people will get a taxi as part of their work expenses. I go through like a whole pad of receipts probably about once a month. Pound for a pad, 12 pound a year, it's about 23p a week. 
Other things to consider in running costs are things like brake pads. I haven't gone through a set of brake pads yet on my taxi, so I can't actually tell you how much they cost, but it's obviously something else to factor in. The total for these running costs are 129 pounds and eight pence. Now this final category of expenditure is again optional, but it's one of those things I like to bring up because it highlights one of the main, sometimes downsides of being self-employed, and that is benefits or the sort of things that some employees get naturally anyway. Things like pension, holiday pay, sick pay, etc., etc. I do put a bit away for a pension. I've considerably scaled this down since the pandemic and since my work levels uh, of course, we're a lot, lot lower. I contribute into two pensions. One of them is a SIP, which is a self-invested personal pension. Uh, and this is kind of your traditional pension. You don't pay any tax on the way in, so it is tax relieved to put it into a SIP and then you pay tax on the gains or when you withdraw it. And you can generally only withdraw it without a penalty uh, at the age of retirement, i.e. 65. On the other hand, I also have a stocks and shares ISA. Now, this one you are taxed before the money goes in, so of course it comes out of your income, but when you draw it, once you've had a growth on it, you are then not taxed, you've already paid the tax on the way in. The other good benefit with a stocks and shares ISA is that you don't get a penalty for withdrawing it early. So if you fancy retiring at the age of 50, 40, whatever you wanna do, stocks and shares ISA might be a good bet. I put 100 pounds into my stocks and shares, I put 50 pounds into my SIP. So that's 23 pounds and eight pence for my ISA, 11 pounds and 54 pence for my pension. The other thing with being self-employed is that you don't get any holiday pay. And that's exacerbated even further if you have something like a taxi, quite a bit of expenses going out. Because I still go on holiday, but I can't take a break from paying my cab. I still have to find that gross sum of money each month. So I'm double hit because I'm not at work, so I'm not earning any money. And then I have to pay the cab. So it's kind of like one week off is not just one week of earnings loss, it's kind of like two weeks because I'm not then paying for that cab. So with that in mind, if we say it's 310 pound a week in kind of cab expenses I want to cover, and I want to go on holiday four weeks a year, that's 1240 pounds a year I need to save just for holidays. Now that's not holiday spending money, as I say, that's just holiday expense cover. I'm still gotta buy a holiday on top of that. But it's always good because it doesn't feel like as hard hit when you come back from holiday. You can go on holiday and you don't have to sweat so much because you've already accounted for this, because you've done your calculations, your expenses, like we're doing in this video. With that in mind, the number I need to be putting away every single week is 23 pound and 85 pence. The other thing to consider, and this is a bit of an occupational hazard, and it happens to a lot of self-employed people, is the idea of having a physio or a massage therapist, something like that. Now, taxi driving isn't strenuous, but sitting down all day does some serious toll on your body. I've already had some ankle mobility issues with my ankle that's affected my driving a little bit and my biking as well. So I kind of need to forecast this because this is only going to get worse as I get older. So if I say I'm going to spend about £250 a year on physio, which is relatively modest, that works out as £4.81 a week. Now, big drum roll. Let's put this all together. We've looked at four key areas. The non-negotiables, the optional expenses, the nice things to have, running costs of the cab. And then finally, it's the, the nicer things that you already get if you're employed. Grand total on a weekly basis is 505 pounds and 98 pence. That is a lot. I can't, it just seems absurd, like honestly, like I can't, that makes my eyes water thinking about that number. Turnover in the cab can be great and it can be so misleading. Like from day dot, I made me a spreadsheet when I'm in the cab that I just chuck all my numbers in, but it's also got my main kind of expenses there, you know, like the cab itself. Uh, Cause then you can see on a weekly basis, if you've turned over, 500 pounds you might look at it and think whoa 500 pound turnover that's great but as we've just explained in this video 
I need £505 a week to cover all those things that enable me to drive the cab or help me to drive the cab. I've not covered personal expenses like my living costs, shopping costs, grocery costs, all those other things that have to be added on top of that. This is just cab stuff effectively. Okay, remove the pension side of things or the physio side of things. It's still about £440, a lot of money. One of my plans was to buy the cab outright because of course £250 of this grand £500 figure is the taxi itself. But an electric taxi out of warranty, it's a bit of a risky game to play. So it's kind of a sobering video this. I wanted to make it because it, it's so easy to get hung up on this idea that taxi drivers make a lot of money. We do turn over a lot of money, don't get it wrong, but there is a lot of expenses associated with being a cabbie. Thank you once again for tuning this video. I'd be really excited to understand your opinions on this. Maybe you're self-employed yourself and you have some kind of expenses that other people don't necessarily see. Or you might tell me that you're employed and say, Tom, it's not as good as you always make it out to be. Be very interested to know. Take care and I'll see you all again soon. Bye bye.